This is Joseph, and we're at the Stone Lion Inn, supposedly a haunted hotel, and uh, the Ghost Adventures have stayed here and done some investigations too. And uh, apparently there's been some pretty uh, weird stuff happening here, and I got a, a friend Billy behind the camera, and he's going to be investigating with me too. And we'll uh, get back to you later. There's Billy as he scratches himself on camera. Put my phone up. I can't, I can't scratch myself. Saying he's putting his phone up. He's scratching himself. Kind of explore around the building, check it out first. Here, Becky, I know you can hack it. I did. So me and Billy just found this. What did you say it was, Billy? In a bombing bed. And what's in a bombing bed? What are during the bodies of blood. And all the fluids and stuff. Oh, damn. Why would it be in the same hotel? It'd just be a few of them. Oh, I see. I haven't really done a lot of research on here. That's, that's interesting. Me and Bill are going to head to the third floor. I said that's where the most activity is. Alright, so we're headed up to the third floor.
yeah, it's pretty pretty hot in there. That's why. Bro, there's a crown here. Really hot. <laughs> Here. Let me try this thing on. Pip pip diddly do. Catch anything up here? We're gonna come back around midnight, one o'clock, and blah blah blah. See what all we can catch. Got some uh, kind of creepy looking dolls back here. few things for you to play with. We got a cat ball that makes a flash of noise when you play with it. Got this th cat ball's going off. Well, I am right next to it. Walk back by it. Well, it wasn't you. <laughs> Spirits here, can you set off the cat ball again? Can you move it again? Move it. If there's any spirits in here, can you give us a sign? Oh crap. <laughs> well, see how you like that. Um, can you set off any of our other devices? Can you make this device right here go to spike? Can you spike it to like orange or red or? Can you set the rim pod off? Make it change every color. Can you set up a rim pod? Can you make it sound off or light green? Or... Cat ball going off again. Can What's you that set another one? Can you set up anything besides the cat balls? Oh, dude. If there's any spirits here, can you set off the rim pod or the cat ball again? The cat ball keeps going off, but the rim pod's not. Can you set off the rim pod at all? Oh, bitch, Gerald. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Alright, so me and Billy are gonna head down to the basement again since we've only been there once. And uh, we're gonna check it out and hopefully we can catch something at least tonight. But we're gonna go back and reinvestigate around 3 a.m. and we're gonna split up after this and see what we can catch. It's gonna be more scary for a while.
I was just saying a bunch of stuff about the Titanic over here. So we noticed this uh, little weird freaking, I don't know why that's up there, no clue. And then there's weirdly this chain hanging from the wall, which looks pretty sick to me. And we got a boat for some reason. Alright, so I think me and Billy are gonna get ready to split up. Billy's gonna stay down here, and I'm gonna take one of the rim pods and one of the cat balls, possibly a spirit box, and go up to the third floor, check it out. I think, I think you should be alright down here, Billy, because when I'm going, it's pitch black. So I may crap my pants a couple of times. But then again, I got. I got Fitzgerald upstairs for, waiting for me, so I'm sure he's wanting to rekindle our romance. So I'll see y'all upstairs. So I'm headed up to the third floor. Actually kind of creeped out to go up here by myself. any spirits in here? Can you set off any of my devices? Are there any spirits in here? Are there any spirits in here? Can you speak to me through my spirit box? Oh, it, it. Are there any spirits in here? Can you speak to me through my spirit box? 
spirits in here at all. Can you give me a sign? Oh. Are there any spirits in here at all? Can you light up the cat ball? Can you set off the rim pod? I'm freaking out. Go up here by myself. Are there any spirits in here at all? Can you give me a sign at all? Any spirits at all in here? Can you give me a sign of anything? Set off the cat ball at all? Anything? Can you move a door? Anything at all? Can you talk to me through my spirit box? Can you light off the rim pod? The cat ball? Can you talk to me through my spirit box? Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Can you set off the rim pod? Can you set off the rim pod? Can you please set off the rim pod for me? Or talk to me. Is there any spirits in here? I am fucking wigging out. Are there any spirits in here at all? Can you give me a sign? Is there any spirits in here? I just want to talk. Anything? Can you set up any of my devices at all? Give me a sign at all? You set off my REM pod, please? Anything? Fuck the cat ball again. Are these the same three spirits from earlier? Can you say three? What the fuck? Holy shit, dude, I'm here. I'm freaking wigging out. I'm gonna put that up these steps. Mm. Oh crap, dude. I'm fucking terrified. Is there any spirits in here? Can you give us a tide? Any type of sound at all? Cap all again. Can you give us a thud, move a door, anything? Make something fall? Dude, I'm freaking shaking, I'm so scared. This is a lot scarier when you're by yourself. Can you give us a sign at all? Anything, like a thud or anything? Maybe make a door move or something. Can you set off the rim pod, please? I just keep setting off the cat ball. Can you set off anything besides the cat ball, please? Anything? Any type of sign, please? 
Set off the rim pod. Anything besides the cat ball. A thud, move a door, anything. All right, well, I'm gonna go. Thank you. Set the rim pod off in here and throw the cat ball over there, I guess. If there's any spirits in here or anything, can you give us a sign at all? Anything? Can you set off the rim pod? Or can you set off the cat ball at least? Can you give us some type of sign? Set off the cat ball or light up my rim pod at all? Anything? Stone Line Inn in 1986, and I did not know anything about its history at the time, nor was I told anything, but it had kind of a jaded history, but the house was built in 1907 by F.E. Houghton, and he came with the land rush of 1889, and he and his first wife built a house that used to be on the east side of this one, and moved in and had four children, and she died. And he remarried, and his second wife had two children while they were living next door. And by that time, he had amassed a huge fortune in the Oklahoma Territory. He had the very first cotton gin. He was the founder of Cotton Oil Company. He had three mercantile stores, eight grocery stores, and the first car dealership. So he was vastly wealthy. Yeah, but that was nothing compared to the wealth that was going to come in the 20s and 30s with the oil. Yeah. Now that was generational. <coughs> that was generational wealth. That was wealth that would go down to children and grandchildren and, and last for many generations. This was just retail wealth. And um, although he was wealthy, he wasn't wealthy for the generations you know, that he would pass down. And um, so in 1906, they ran out of room with the children, the six kids next door, and they can, uh, commissioned this house to be built. And this house was built by the same gentleman who was here building the Carnegie Library. And in its time, it was the most expensive house built in Guthrie. It cost 11,009. A little girl who was born in the year 1900 next door. And when she moved in here, she would have been seven years old. She contracted what I'm told is that she contracted whooping cough and probably the maid over medicated her and she died yeah. because she died of an overdose of, you know, the youth, they were using opium and uh, codeine in the cat cough service at that time and that's probably what happened. And that's I, how she died. They don't, they leave that out because I've never, I haven't ever heard that. You haven't heard what? That they, they think they over, overdosed the daughter. We, they didn't. One of the housekeepers did, or the maid, whoever was taking care of the child in the in the early evening, and just gave her too much medication. Yeah, like all sorts of women said that they just, she just passed away at a young age. Don't really give a reason why. Is well, it's his early days that happened. But like, yeah, they left that, that part out. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Um. 
I've met one of the children who was still alive when I bought this house. Really? And I got most of my information from him. And his name was Russell. Okay. And I had a little family reunion for them back in 1989, somewhere in there. I owned the house for a couple of years, and he was still alive. And his nephews, um, Margaret Houghton Bates, was one of the grandchildren. And she knew him well. That was her uncle. And they, uh, she and her husband got him out of a nursing situation that he was in, in I think, in Fort, uh, Fort Worth. And they brought him up here for, the, for a little reunion. And he went through the house with me and told me lots of stories. Anyway, the house, another reason people in the, in the community have always thought it was haunted is this was also a funeral home yeah, back in the 20s. The Houghtons um, fell on hard times. The bow weevil struck, and their fortune was tied into the cotton market, and it was going down fast. So they decided to move to Enid, where they had a mercantile store, and um, take care of that. And while they were gone, they didn't want to lose this house, so they rented it to, they leased it to Smith's, Smith Gooch Funeral Homes, and it became a mortuary. It was a mortuary for about eight, eight years. Yeah, okay. That's a embalming. Right the there. embalming table was actually in the kitchen when I bought this house. That's where the embalming was done originally, in the originally, kitchen. In the kitchen. Uh, they couldn't do it in the basement because you can't bring a body in a coffin out of the basement. Yeah, it'd be really hard with the stairs. The stairs, both of the outdoor stairs are very, very steep. Steeper and, than the inside ones? Yes. Holy moly. And the, <laughs> Those are pretty steep. And of course the inside stairs make two turns. You know, you have to go approach yeah. it from one direction, go up and come in a different, another 90 degree angle. So you can't carry anybody in a coffin. So what they did is, is uh, when uh, Smith Gooch Funeral Services owned the, rented the house, they used the kitchen to do the embalming. So. On the day of closing, I'm going through the house with Mrs. Walker. They, she and her husband were the second owners. I'm the third owner in a house that's over 110 years old. Yeah, pretty awesome. And the, she was the second owner, and nothing was left. All of the furniture had been auctioned off. There wasn't anything left in the house. All this furniture came with me from San Fe, New Mexico. Okay. And um, so it had been auctioned off. And we came to that table in the kitchen, and Mrs. Walker said that she used it, that it was her buffet. And she would cook big meals for her children who would come home on the weekends, and they would have a, a lovely meal, and then put the leftovers on the buffet, throw a tablecloth over it, and then everybody would come back in the evening, you know, five to seven, come and go, that southern kind of thing. Yeah. So on the day of closing, I'm going through here, and that table's the only thing left. And I didn't know what it was. So I just said, and Mrs. Walker at that time was in her 60s. I'm older than that. And um, she says to me, I said, Mrs. Walker, aren't you going to take this table? And she says, no, sugar, we're downsizing. We don't have room for that table. But you had admired it when you, when you was here. We thought we'd leave it for you. Would you like to have that table? And I said, oh, I would love to have that table. It's so unusual. And she said, yes, it is unusual. <laughs> and I said, is it a baker's table? I've always wanted a baker's table. I love to cook, and I'm going on and on and on. At that time, I was about 36, 37 years old. And I was just gushing. I was so excited to have the table. And I said, is it a baker's table? And she said, well, it certainly could be, sugar. It's yours now. I want you to have it. She knew damn well it was the embalming table from Smith's funeral home. She was born and raised in Guthrie. <coughs> so she knew. I didn't find out for three more months. I gotta go grab a bag. My battery's about to die. Okay. Be right back. <laughs> sure. So where were we? Just got done 
Oh, let's that lady see. got done giving you that volume tone. Yes. So it was three months before I found out that it was an embalming table. In the meantime, I had I had had my crew come from Santa Fe. I owned a construction crew in Santa Fe, and we put six. I brought six carpenters, one engineer, and my mother, and my two little boys. And in eight, seven weeks or so, we put eight bathrooms in this house and opened it as the first bed and breakfast in Oklahoma. So I knew right away something was strange about the house. The children and I were living on the third floor and we would hear footsteps coming up the steps, the door would open, the door would close, there'd be nobody there. And my kids would get awakened in the night and they'd come get into bed with me and they would say, oh mom, what's that? And I couldn't say what was on my mind. I think this place is haunted. We gotta get the hell out of here. You can't say that to little kids. You have to be calm. So I would say, oh children, this is an old house and it's settling. Let's talk about construction. And I would tell them how a house comes out of the ground and you know how it moves and stuff. The next time they'd come and get into bed with me, they'd say, <coughs> okay, mom, that wasn't construction sound. That's something else. I said, oh, children. This is a wooden house. It expands and contracts with humidity. Let's talk about the weather. And I would be so boring, they'd go to sleep. And that was the whole purpose. Go go to sleep so they can get up in the morning and go to school. Right. So after a while, I was beginning to think this house has issues. <coughs> and I investigated a little more and found out more about how it had been used, that it was a funeral home and all kinds of stuff. So the most common thing. <coughs> The room in which you're sleeping, you slept, is lots of people have reported to us that, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm right. hopping in. will you excuse me a minute? Yeah, I'm uh, going to get something to drink. We can get over it and excuse me, because I was like, no, please don't, because it was on our phone. Yeah, so, we were having experiences from the time we moved in here. And it wasn't for several months that I was to learn that it was a funeral home and learn the story about the little girl and how she died in the house. Since then, we've had guests sleep in the room you're sleeping in, and they report that between 2 and 2.30 in the morning, they've been awakened when a small child comes into the room and is patting them on the cheek, but when they come to full wakefulness, there's nobody there. And um, we've had other things, almost every... Everybody has reported some, I mean, some people have reported something in every room. And the wedding suite, uh, the night Ghost Hunters was here, yes. we saw this shadow cross across the room and turn toward us, and it crossed over the fireplace and kind of turned toward us, and we were all standing at the door coming in, and it said, Grant, get out. Well, you know, one of the the stars of the show were Grant and Jason, and yeah. Grant's uh -huh. birthday happens to fall exactly on the same day as my son Grant. They were both born on July 1st, 1973. They are exactly the same age, same birth date. Yeah. Yeah, that was weird. Get off the table. Right. Go, 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 go. Get down. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's, that's our comic relief for the film, okay? Right. Yeah. He's, he's determined. Okay. He wants to keep he wants to be a part of everything right. that's going on. Did he bother last night at all? Uh he just came up to us a little bit, that's it. Yeah. Just wanted some attention. Did you get anything upstairs? Uh the cat's ball the cat balls went off, but like my ring bothered nothing. Casey made her spike a little bit. And I heard like footsteps walking up the steps when I was up there. That was it. We hear that a lot. Yeah. The other thing we hear a lot of is a bowling ball. Oh, that's the weird. home is on the third floor. They had eight little kids, you know, by the time they moved into this house. The older four had already pretty much left home. So they were raising eight little children in this home and they had the third floor, which was the old ballroom mm -hmm. in many of these houses in Guthrie. 
third floor is the ballroom and also maids rooms off of that. But in this case, it was the ballroom and they changed and they used it in the winter as a playroom for the children. They would just open the doors and let the heat go up. And you put a sweater on your kids and they could go up there and play yeah. and, um, and be comfortable. And so they made a little bowling alley for them. You know how you run two by fours down and yeah. you paint the circles where the pins go. Mm -hmm. And they had some wooden pin, you know, a wooden set of uh, uh, pins and a, and a wooden ball. And they would roll that down and, you know, of course you have to set your own pins. It wasn't like it was automated or anything. Yeah, right. It was just a children's thing. And they would do that and play, play ball and play like they were bowling. And the hooks that you see on the ceiling, they had a couple of trapezes. Uh, Victorians were bodybuilders, and so they wanted their children to be in good shape. And children, uh, the, Tom Mix, who was a famous cowboy, western cowboy from the 20s, Tom Mix was, had his own gymnasium here in Guthrie mm -hmm. at the turn of the century. And he's, uh, he was teaching bodybuilding. So they had a pommel horse up there, I've been told, and they had a balance beam and, and some, some trapeze swing-like things. Cool. Yeah. So they had a good childhood. The hooks like were really, really, really good parents. And they could afford to send every one of them to college. So anybody who wanted to go to college, and they encouraged it, wanted their kids to be educated. I think they were very sweet to their children. Nothing bad has, you know, other than a child dying in the house, that was an accident. Yeah. But this is not, there's nothing evil in this house. Yeah, they always feel like it's horrible or anything. No. The kids and my boys felt like the house protected us. And, uh, That's good. So yeah. we've, you know, we've always felt like, like you take care of the house, the house takes care of you. Yeah. Definitely like all the, all the art. <laughs> all the, the furnishings and art, yeah. You know? And cucumber painting in the red. Yeah. Yeah, it's appropriate for a dining room. <laughs> and the mushrooms are over on that side. They're by the same artist. Huh. I didn't see the mushrooms. So, what else can I answer for you? <clears throat> We tried to get that Eleanor McCurdy's grave last time, we couldn't find it. Okay. Go out here to Noble, Highway 33. <clears throat> we made it to the grave. To you made it to Boot Hill? Yeah. Did you go in the first cemetery or the second one? Didn't go to the second one. The second one is Summit Cemetery, that's the old one. Alright. So go in the second one as you're going north. Mm -hmm. The first one is Memorial Gardens, that's a new cemetery. That's only been there about 20 years. Maybe 30, I don't know, but it's it's considered new. Then go past that to the second cemetery, which is Summit. And you can tell because it's really old, old monuments and stuff are in there. Go up to the roundabout where there's a, a, a fountain. Go up to the roundabout. Go around the roundabout till you're facing north. Take that north road, it will go right in front of the Sexton's Cottage. And when you pass the Sexton's Cottage, you make a left hand, a right hand turn, go up one block, and turn left, and, and it'll say Boot Hill. He's buried in Boot Hill. That's the only Boot Hill in in Oklahoma, a historic Boot Hill. There is a Boot <coughs> uh, outside the prison in McAllister, but it's for, it was for the prisoners who died in prison, yeah, nice. and nobody claimed their body. So there is one there, but it's not a it's not a historical boot hill where fugitives and people who were killed in the commission of a crime or you know whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real boot hill. Yeah, so we, we went to the wrong cemetery. I, I think you went to. I bet you went to Memorial. Yeah. You you have to go to the second cemetery. Some you'll know it. It has old gates on it. Looks kind of creepy. Looks more like something out of Stephen King. The other one looks cheerful. Right. Yeah, we went to like a gate. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there's a gate on both of them, but you want to go through the second one. And it'll say Summit. Yeah, there's Memorial. I think we went to the newer one. Yeah. It was like a it was like an office and I went and knocked on the door, the light was on, but I guess we're going in there. You were you were at Memorial. Oh. Yeah, you were at Memorial. <laughs> the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, the That's office, the section, they have a section cottage at uh, Summit. Huh. It's much older. And an equipment barn will be right in front of you, a two story equipment barn. Make the turn to the right on that block, go up to the next little street you can turn on, and that's where Boot Hill is. And it'll okay. say, there's a sign saying Boot Hill. We'll have to go out there when we leave. Okay, good. So, anything else you want to know? That's it. Well, it was nice having you. You didn't like the sausages? Uh -huh. Did you try them? I didn't even try them. Okay, try them. You gotta try them. They're really sweet. They taste like candy. Yeah. Yeah, just try one. I'll try one. He's a really picky eater. Well, I'm, I'm the mom. You have to try one. Isn't that delicious? They're not bad. I didn't, I didn't even know there were sausages. Yeah, they're sausage and then they're covered with uh, uh, like apricot preserves. They look like... We cook them in apricots. Got like pepperonis uh, or something in there. Pepperonis. No, they're just sausage. Summer sausage. I see. Okay, is there anything I can get you? Uh, no. I think I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Pretty cool. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope you got lots of stuff just to over here during the night. Hopefully, we. Oh, it's got audio to listen to, too. We've got to listen to that and check everything and watch everything. See if we got anything. Right. Yeah. We could have missed things. You so. know, when people like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures come, they take over this dining yeah. room. And they'll have, mm -hmm. like, back here, they'll have three or four monitors. I didn't know Ghost Hunters like, came here. I knew that Ghost Adventures came here, and that one was pretty funny because Aaron, I guess he had his summer track showing. I guess one of the ghost hunters would have crashed. Oh, we had losing all kinds of things happening. <laughs> that was like, no, look up the one on ghost hunters. Um, that was really awesome. Those guys are really serious. Now, they had a great time. They, you know, there's, there was like 17 guys in that crew. So when they travel, they travel with three big um, yeah. SUVs. And um, they thought they were coming to the great southwest and that they would be warm because they're out of Jersey. Yeah. And so in March, it's freezing cold in Jersey. <laughs> so they thought, oh, we're in Oklahoma where the wind comes sweeping down the plane, you know. They got here, we had a blizzard. Oh, yeah. They had only shorts to wear. Oh, yeah. That's all they had brought were shorts. One guy who travels with them has to either be an EMT or a registered nurse. Yeah. Because they have a lot of stuff that has to, you know, they've got to watch these guys yeah. and make sure nobody gets sick or if they get hurt or something. They've got somebody in hand that can get them to a hospital. Yeah. So that guy ends up being their mother, really. So here he's got all these guys freezing to death. All they have is shorts and t shirts. Well, no sweats. <laughs> well, that's what they did. That's what he did. He went out. Now, well, this Think about what's available at Walmart in March. Sweats, <laughs> um, shorts, <laughs> Easter baskets, and shorts. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, but as he was passing out through the through the end caps, OU and OSU have two end caps out there, and they were full of sweats and t-shirts and sweatshirts and and sweatpants. So he bought. That he did not, one team had enough for everybody, so he divided it up. I had no idea how popular OU and OSU are and the big rivalry. Because I'm not much of a football person. I'm from New Mexico. Football's not big in New Mexico. Now we have Bedlam on our hands. We have guys who are, now they're rivals. They divided up the uniforms, the sweats, and they're out there. There's four inches of ice. Four to six inches of ice, and then on top of that, we get two or three inches of snow. 
So you crush through every footstep you make, you're crushing down ice and stuff. Yeah. And they're out there playing football. Oh, damn. Yeah, it was a miracle they didn't kill each other. Right. You know, on the ice and snow and fall off wood. One of them fell off, they just went sliding down, and there's a three foot drop before he hits the sidewalk. Oh, God. Yeah. That being an EMT came in handy. There was a lot of rapping that day. Oh, they were fun. Sounds now, they good. were the fun group to have around. I bet. Sounds like it. And you need to, but yeah, you need to look at their episode. They've got a yeah, lot we'll to check that out. Yeah, that's a good one. And now Ghost Adventures, he's not so much fun. Yeah, he's kind of... An ass? Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> but, you know, I I liked him. He was, he was a, he's a nice person. He has nice people working for him. But they don't have the fun that Ghost Hunters have. Yeah, they're kind of like more serious and... Well, he kind of like over over the top. Yeah. Like, but you have you can't fault him. He has figured out what makes him money. Yeah. So he is good at this. A lot of people uh, on line, like people we watch, Stan and Kobe, they uh, they kind of act like it was like, oh, well, I want to do it. I want to do it. And like, more like watching, like I'll freak out and stuff happens. Like kind of taking the fun out of it. Kind of like I get it, get you to use and stuff, but like. He kind of just act like kids. I mean, I know they are like, they're all like 23, but they're like, they'll hear like, oh, do you hear that? Like, yeah. Or like, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> That's how we right. went to Parallel Forest. But yeah, true. Last uh, Friday, we went to uh, Edmond, we checked out the Bruins of Gandini's for the circus. We went to Chalcho, uh, Indian. Boarding school in El Reno, then we checked out the parallel forest and lot, and, and we kept hearing noises and stuff. Kept it like a, a squeak. Yeah, like it sounded like a rusty uh, chain out in the woods. And our first trip, we ended up uh, seeing like a, our light reflecting off of something. Turns out it's my car. <laughs> we walked in a complete circle, don't know how to do it twice. You can't explain how we walked in a half in a circle. Have you been to Springfield, Missouri? No, we haven't been outside of state yet. Yeah, okay, they have the Pythian Castle. Pythian Castle. Pythian Castle. Pythians were like, almost like Masonic Lodge. Mm -hmm. The Pythians, and that place is haunted, and it looks like a castle. It Ooh. really is. The Pythian Castle. So I'll check that out sometime. Yeah. Well, you guys. Go ahead and do whatever you need to do to okay. finish up. Yeah, we're gonna probably pack it and head out. All right, we well got me and Billy over here, and we're uh, leaving uh, Stone Lion in. Well, thanks for watching the video. Like, share, and subscribe if you want to see us go to more haunted or uh, spooky places, or if you want to see any more drum videos or covers. Thanks for watching.